All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how businesses actually earn revenue from social media. And I'm specifically focusing on the social media uh, providers right here. So not the companies that actually do their advertisement or whatever on social media, but the actual social media companies themselves. Because if you think about it, it might be a little bit confusing at first how this whole profit model works. Now running a social media site is expensive. Um, you have billions of users using a social media site and they're uh, posting billions of units of content daily, whether that's video or images or text posts or any of that kind of thing, whether it's actual original content or responses or whatever, there's billions of units of content posted daily to social media. And not only that, uh, users are coming from all across the world. So you don't just store everything on one cloud server. You might have a content uh, distribution network that has servers all across the world that are working to synchronize with each other to make sure that you know, all the databases are, uh, information from different databases are going to the right place and people can access content from all around the world and different servers, all that kind of stuff. So all of this adds up to being very, very expensive. So how do they make money? How does a social media company make money from all that, from all of these really, really expensive server costs and power costs, all that kind of stuff, especially since it's all free? How do they do it? The thing about social media is that you're not the customer. If you're not paying for a service, then you're the product. And this goes beyond just social media, but it's very applicable for social media. Social media platforms compete for user attention because they want users to be constantly using them, posting them, interacting with them, creating a good environment to attract in other users and all that kind of stuff. They're designed to hold attention as much as possible. And it actually gets down to why psychology is so involved in social media because they want to make this stuff borderline addicting if not actually addicting uh there's some really interesting documentaries that i'll have to see if i can find and recommend in the course but social media companies aren't trying to advertise to you or get you to use their program or i mean they they want you to use their program but you're not the customer here they are trying to monopolize your attention as much as they possibly can, especially over other social media sites, because they want to sell your attention to advertisement companies so that they can put ads in your social media feed and then you'll see those ads and then, you know, do whatever with them, whether it's click it or scroll past or whatever. But they want you to be on their app or website or whatever Marley. I apologize. She's very loud. Um, they want you to be on their website using their service so that they can give you ads. They can serve you ads and make money off of that advertisement. We'll talk about that more in a sec. But they'll actually use the data that they have on you as a user and your relationships with other communities and people and all that kind of stuff. Your interests the interests of people close to you, the other interests of people that share communities with you, they'll use all of that kind of information to try to effectively determine the things that you are interested in and target advertisements towards you. And it can be a little scary the way that they use all this data to do it. But because all of this is targeted, that's going to maximize the chance that you're going to click on an ad and actually follow through and buy something. More on that in a little bit. Now this advertising revenue model that I was talking about is how most social media revenue is actually earned. They're going to take your interests or things that they at least can with some confidence guess you might be interested in and embed them in your uh, actual social media 
feed or actually even in other places as well because this applies to a lot of different things so for example paid search is something that you'll actually see a lot in search engines where advertisements will be placed as search results in different search engines whether it's google or bing or yahoo or whatever they'll place search they'll place advertised uh, pages near the top of a search engine result and then try to get you know hope that you'll click them because it's a top result and hopefully you don't notice the word ad next to it and you just see oh this might be useful and click it it's also display and banner ads uh, pop-up ads ads embedded in feeds and content uh, so your social media feed or the article you're reading or whatever might be interrupted by an ad and there might be sponsored content that shows up as well so a let's say a twitter well, tweet that someone makes and then chooses to sponsor so that a whole lot of people see it and are more likely to interact with it. And the way users actually respond to digital ads is with clicks. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of other ways of advertising, like trying to measure engagement and that kind of stuff. And that gets into the extremely creepy side of things like has the user paused their scrolling to look at the ad? Have they moved their mouse over it, even if they didn't click it? Um, there's a lot of people who want to implement eye tracking on stuff so that they'll see if your attention actually gets diverted over to the ad, which is something else. But typically, the main interaction is with clicking the ad. You actually click or tap the ad. And then when a user actually does that, the company that made the ad pays the social media company or pays Google or something like that. And that also helps give advertisers helpful data. So like you click on it, they already know that you clicked on it, but then also do you go on to do the thing that they want you to do, whether it's like a specific page or buy a product or interact with a post or something like that they are able to collect data from that from the social media websites as well because the social media websites will provide a ton of data so advertisers can understand not just how many people clicked on the ad but then how many people followed through and did the thing that they want them to do or something like that now data for the actual targeting that i talked about is uh, going to come from user content so like posts and things that they've responded to things that they like communities that they are involved in um, it'll come from that kind of stuff it might come from the relationships so who they are uh, actually connected to uh, what those people like because if your friend likes something there might be a chance that you like it as well they'll take data from all of that uh, in the case of like search engines and stuff they'll take data from things that you have searched over a long period of time, which is why search engines uh, might want you to log in so badly. Um, if it's something like Microsoft or Google, they might be taking data from other sources as well, like scanning your emails or looking at the things that you upload to Google Drive or OneDrive or the things that you type into the Microsoft Office applications or all that kind of stuff uh, with Windows even. Windows report can report a lot of data back to Microsoft that they can then use for advertising purposes as well if they so choose. So the point, the, the thing that I'm trying to work towards here is that companies want to collect a lot of user data because they want to target advertisements to those users, which benefits them because users are more likely to click ads that they're interested in and also benefits the companies that are putting up those ads because users are more likely to buy things that they're interested in rather than if someone that their ad gets showed to someone who's completely not interested whatsoever. So all the companies involved here benefit from users getting you know, users uh, having their data scraped. Uh, there's arguments on how much users benefit or are harmed by this, and it might depend 
on how users how much users value their privacy and how valuable privacy should be considered and all that kind of stuff that's a whole debate to be had but um that's the idea behind why social media companies are making their users the product rather than the actual customers because their users are you know they're trying they're trying to get their users to click on ads to get them data so that they can target ads more effectively to them so that they will click those ads they're the product because they are selling user attention and feedback and data to companies that will take advantage of that with the advertising systems now all that being said use increases value for a social media website or even you know anything that uses an advertising revenue model but especially a social media website because all the um all of the content is user generated so users have to want to be on that site they have to want to generate content so that other users will see that content and will want to stay and they want to provide users with content that they think will be relevant to them or interesting to them or any of that kind of stuff so users will stay they want to make connections and build communities and build up these massive social networks so that they're better able to get data but also so that they're better able to retain users to give users a reason why they want to stay on that site so that they'll continue looking at and hopefully clicking on ads more users equals more content equals more new users equals more value and more value equals more returning users more users means more ad revenue so the conclusion we can get from all of this is that use increases ad revenue which then gives value now some social media sites go freemium which is where you have a free basic service you're able to use that basic service as much as you want and you might get a totally fine user experience for you but there are also optional paid uh, upgrades paid upgrades or advanced features that users could take advantage of so for an example the ability to sponsor posts so that a whole bunch of people have to see them or the ability to edit your posts or even other people's posts after you've made them or uh, advanced searching or all that kind of stuff uh, you can also have an ad free experience for users users who don't want to see ads which allows for reduced dependence on ad revenue and thus a reduced dependence on gathering data off of users and it can combat ad blocking um, now on the browsers a lot of users are starting to get into ad blocking where they install an extension onto their browser that prevents ads from actually being loaded it catches like the code on a website that loads in an ad and it prevents that ad from actually showing up uh, this doesn't work typically on mobile clients uh, big asterisk there there are ways of completely destroying ads whatsoever on any of your devices but they are really technical uh, you're welcome to ask me for more information if you want um, but for a web the user of a web browser um, you can effectively get rid of advertisements now this mostly applies to uh, Firefox uh, because Google Chrome no longer actually allows ad blocking um, Google itself changed the engine that Chrome runs on in a way that prevents ad blocking extensions from actually running at least the ad blocking extensions that we are aware of right now and then it has like some quote-unquote ad blockers that actually serve up quote-unquote approved ads as opposed to quote-unquote unapproved ads but it still is showing ads and also collecting data on you and vice versa but the fact that google chrome 
uh, well, Google updated the engine that powers Google Chrome means that it also affects things like Opera GX and the Brave browser and Microsoft Edge and all that kind of stuff, which all also run on the Chromium engine. So that whole thing uh, kind of killed ad blocking on most browsers. Uh, Brave is a little controversial because I, it might actually still have some amount of ad blocking on there, but then they're also harvesting your data even harder because it's owned by a um, advertising company anyway. But in a sense, so is Google Chrome is also owned by an advertising company. So really, if you want to block ads, switch to Firefox and I don't know, I'm biased towards Firefox. It's a much better browser in my opinion, but regardless. That's a little bit of a tangent. If you're looking for more information about how to block ads, you can definitely ask me. Or if you want to get into the specifics of does ad blocking cause more harm than good? Uh, there's a lot of debate that can be had there as well. It's a very interesting discussion. So I'm also open for that. But regardless, the freemium revenue model can help combat any uh, damages that ad blocking could cause to a company that relies on ad revenue, even if the, you know, they, they might've been relying on harmful ads that are tracking users and redirecting them to really bad places on the web. And then users might have done ad blocking. So then they might allow ad blocking as, or they might allow like no ads as a freemium service or add on other freemium services. So they don't really have to rely on predatory ads and they're not, uh, being, uh, they're not losing revenue because of ad blocking. So allowing people to pay for extra features can be really helpful. And then there's other revenue models as well. The sale of apps or virtual goods for that kind of service. Uh, the textbook actually talks a lot about Fortnite here, which I suppose you could make the argument that it might be social media, but you could also make an argument that it's not. I don't know, but uh, sale of apps or virtual goods, like maybe unlocking specific um, emojis to use or uh, unlocking games or activities you can do within the social network, all that kind of stuff could be considered, uh, like selling all of those could be considered a revenue model there. Uh, you can get just straight up get donations. Um, I'm going to really, really, really stretch and call Wikipedia a social media, specifically because users create content on Wikipedia and there's also interactions through talk pages and stuff like that. Wikis are a bit of a stretch, but they could be considered social media. Uh, that is donation run. Um, and then there's also affiliate commissions. If uh, people make recommendations to certain things, uh, that people can buy on a service, uh, then an affiliate commission would allow that person to, like, say, advertise that thing that can be bought and then make money when people actually follow the link that they post or actually make a purchase or something like that. All those different uh, revenue models exist. Now, with mobile devices becoming more and more of a thing, they're having questions on how they impact ad revenue. So in the past, uh, an ad advertising based revenue stream on the actual internet would have been through a website that people were accessing with a laptop or desktop computer before smartphones really started taking off. And people would be able to actually, you know, see a lot of ads on one screen because they have a larger screen than a mobile phone. Uh, and they can actually intentionally click on ads that they want to click on. But with mobile devices, uh, we see a transition towards smaller and smaller screens, especially as people use mobile devices a lot more than more traditional uh, PC form factors like the laptop and tap and uh, desktop computer nowadays. So the smaller screens on mobile phones and tablets uh, means fewer ads that are able to be displayed at once. You typically have to display one ad that takes up most of the screen or something like that. Uh, 
So you have this larger ad and also the fact that uh, touch controls are a little bit um, wonky and the fact that the button that you might need to press to close out the ad, the little X in the upper corner, might be a little bit small and you get a lot of accidental clicks. Which might be good, might be bad. Um, certainly there's more actual clicks that are happening so the social media site or whatever is getting more money because the client company is paying them more due to the extra clicks. But what the client company actually is more interested in is uh, conversion rate, which is the frequency that people who click on an ad do an intended action. So for example, if you click on an ad for a product, the frequency that you, people who do that would actually buy it, or the frequency that of people who click on an ad for a social media page actually follow it or like it or whatever. And click-through rate actually goes down with mobile devices because of the accidental clicks. I said click-through rate, I meant to say conversion rate. Accidental uh, clicks means conversion rate does go down. Um, now it's kind of hard to see how conclusive it is on whether or not it's been a net positive or net negative. Um, there's a lot of data that the textbook presents on the different uh, stats regarding click-through rate and all that kind of stuff. It's hard to get a conclusive answer out of it, but it certainly impacts ad revenue somehow. And we're probably going to see a lot more transformation of the advertising-based revenue scheme uh, as time moves on. Now, for a, a uh, company, either a company that is buying an advertisement or a social media company, um, a benefit to people having mobile devices on them all the time is geofencing. Uh, it's a service that's based on the user location and some predefined virtual fences, which allows some application to know when the user crosses a particular virtual fence and then once that user crosses the fence, it triggers some automated action. An example is if you have a virtual fence at the doorway to a bookstore, you might get an ad pop up that advertises a really good deal on a particular series of books or a particular genre or t style of book or something like that. If you walk into a fast food restaurant, you might cross a virtual fence that then serves you some advertisements for a deal from a competitor, for example, or a deal from the restaurant that you actually walked into that might prompt you to get a bigger purchase than you might have normally in exchange for a lot of food. Something that seems like a good deal to you, but results in you paying more money to the company. But the idea is that you recognize when a user is near a business and you might push ads for a business or for a related business or something like that. Now phones are able to determine your location in a number of ways. You can use GPS, uh, nearby Wi-Fi networks, uh, connections to cellular towers that are nearby, and you know there's all kinds of stuff. There's like Bluetooth enabled devices that can detect uh, when a phone that has Bluetooth enabled is nearby um, with the nearby Wi-Fi networks. If you're near a public Wi-Fi network, especially one that you have connected to in the past, that can be a huge indicator of where you are. But um, if you've ever seen your phone be able to determine your approximate location, even if you have your location services turned off, likely they're getting information from things like which cellular tower you're connected to, maybe the nearby uh, Wi-Fi networks, uh, nearby public Wi-Fi networks that they're able to get information from, all that kind of stuff. So you might not even have to be directly connected to a GPS or directly have your location services turned on, and you might still get uh, some sort of geofencing based on your approximate location. So that's one benefit to advertising companies and to companies that are actually making those advertisements, especially them, because they know if you're nearby that you're going to be more likely to be interested in 
actually purchasing something from them, for example. So, uh, there's a lot of methods of determining a user's actual or approximate location and then using location-based advertising uh, services. And that's the kind of stuff that Facebook was getting really hard into, trying to figure out where users were at all times so that they could push this kind of advertising or recommend more connections or something like that. Um, I am less familiar with the work other social media services have done on that front, but Facebook had some notorious examples of doing that. Well, that is a discussion on how uh, some businesses are able to earn revenue from social media. It had that focus on social media companies themselves earning revenue from the social media that they run. But also we talk a little bit about how businesses use social media for advertising in order for them to themselves gain, ideally, some amount of revenue. So that's a, kind of the two parts of the discussion here. And of course, the third part, which wasn't really as big, but I think is still important. If the service is free, you are the product. 